Hey, how you doing? Welcome to Scott High School on the AI Makeup Air Unit. I'd like to explain this to you today. Uh, my name is Jerry McGowan with Industrial Design, and I was the AI startup guy. And I'd like to show the outside of the unit, and we'll go from there. This is the uh, supply air motor here. And what we do, this is an, uh, a makeup air unit. We take 100% outside air, and we mix it with the return air to precondition it. And as a result, we're able to drop the, uh, the incoming air seven or eight degrees. So if I've got 90 degrees outside, I'll, I'll bring an 82 degree air, introduce 82 degree air into this machine. It's really efficient. Or vice versa, in the heating mode, I'm able to preheat the outside air with the exhausting return air. So it saves a lot of energy for the school. So what we have here is the, uh, the brains of the unit. Uh, Variable speed drives by Scala. You get one year warranty in this. On everything in this machine, you get one year warranty from start update. Um, the control is by others. There's a control company control this machine, telling it what to do, when to come on, what to do. So this is pretty simplistic. Set of contactors and VFD drives. Uh, if you happen to order any warranty parts for this machine, you just look at the serial number, call Blau Mechanical, and they'll set you up. Uh, this particular machine uh, has free stats controlled by others. Uh, and over here, uh, I'll just go back to this if I don't mind here. The supply air fan uh, is a direct drive which saves energy and we use a backward inclined blade which means it goes like it's backwards and it's self cleaning. We get more static pressure and more airflow with less horsepower bringing the efficiency of the unit up. Okay the next part of this machine is the heat wheel which is uh, really unique here. The uh, return air passes through the wheel this way. The incoming air passes this way. As the heat wheel turns, it exchanges heat, heating or cooling, depending. And also this heat wheel does uh, total heat enthalpy. It does humidity as well. It pulls a certain amount of humidity out of the building. And to clean this wheel, uh, you loosen these screws up here and you'll have to disconnect these wires. This slides out, the guys can wash it with like simple green, a non-caustic type cleaner, and then just shove it back in, wire it back up, it's ready to go. But the importance of not uh, uh, cleaning this often is to change these filters, the incoming air this way and the incoming air over there that way. That way we give a good life to this. And this also has a one year warranty as well, but you have to really take care of this. Okay, the next part of the machine is the uh, return air fan exhausting the air out. And it's also a single motor uh, direct drive with a backward inclined blade. So the efficiency goes up as well there. And we exhaust it out after it leaves the heat wheel. So coming in over here, fresh air in, has to go through this set of filters here. Make sure they're clean to keep that heat wheel clean. Two inch pleated filters. Goes through here, goes through the heat wheel. The other uh, importance about this machine, we have it's two inch thick uh, foam walls with all gasketed doors to seal it and to keep the heating or cooling inside the machine. And the engineer spec'd out three different disconnects. So one for each motor, heat wheel, return air fan, supplier fan. I think they'll enjoy it and use it. I'm John Hyatt with Blau Mechanical uh, here at Scott High School. Um, I'm going to give a little owner training on um, geothermal heat pumps, uh, hydronic pumps, and uh, just general overall HVAC equipment. Uh, we'll start out here um, on this water source heat pump, which is for the air handler here. Um, maintenance wise, these things are they're pretty friendly. There ain't a whole lot to do. Um, annually, I mean, things you can do is um, check compressor amp draw, you know, make sure it's within the 10% range. Um, other than that, if you have any issues with these things, there is um, your DXM boards here have a um, LED set up. And when they're, they'll give flashes indicating whatever kind of fault they may be in, which the book for it, which is here, will give you um, an idea of what to go to or look for, Put, point you in the right direction basically of uh, any kind of faults or anything. So. As far as that goes, they're pretty much just owner-friendly pieces of equipment. There's not a whole lot you know, to do maintenance-wise to them. Um, but this particular unit is a water-to-water -water heat pump, 
um, which means it's bringing in the ground loop as its condenser and the other water side is going to a coil in the air handler. Um, it's two separate water systems. Um, it's got its own, own pump here which is um, self-contained. It really, there's no grease ports or anything so and it, <clears throat> it works off a pressure differential here as you can see that's piped in. So basically you know it's bringing in the building automations is going to call for whatever you know set point that to run at and you know it's going to cool the water down just like chill water and the ground is the condenser so on this particular system here you also have a side stream filter is over here to the left of it okay on the side stream filter here you've got a set of ball valves on the inlet and the leaving side when you do go to uh, check it or you know wash it out you want to valve each side off you have a drain valve here you open up to relieve any pressure on the tank and then you this here is a twist off cap you just twist it off leave the drain open that way it'll suck some air get all the water out and then you'll pull your filter up out and it's just right here you can grab a hold of it clean it you know expect it look at it put it back in screw the cap back on and well actually what you want to do is you want to actually leave it off crack this shut the drain valve crack this get that water level up to the top then shut it off put the lid back on then you can open your other valve that way you're not introducing a lot of air into the into the system so that's basically and when you're cleaning or inspecting that's the procedure you want to take um, something like this you may want to check you know the first three to six months as it's running and then there really shouldn't be a whole lot of debris in the water system on the air handler because like I said it's its own little self-contained system so but that's something good to check every three to six months and then as it you know you go along you'll get a better feel you may not have to check it as much so um, but down here um, you also have an air separator for this in particular system and an expansion tank and on the water side the air handler water side you have its own pump that is back there as well which kind of same deal sealed pump works off a differential pressure switch so as far as the piping here this is basically and the equipment on this system this is basically it so we can move to a water to air heat pump take a look at it all right these these are also heat pumps these are water to air heat pumps basically same concept your geothermal runs through as your condenser which is these lines here and then but you have duct work that feeds a room on um, these guys here maintenance wise really not a whole lot kind of the same deal um, you do have a dxm board which is under this cover and it's the same deal as the water source heat pump you'll have a series of leds if there is any faults um, but you, annual maintenance you could check um, amp draw on the compressor just make sure it's in that 10 percent range same on the fan you know check it as long as everything's running there's really not a whole lot you have to do um, each unit has its own filter rack which basically has got a wing nut here you take loose filters right here need to be changed every 30 days because one thing these heat pumps here are really important is water flow and air flow if you don't have adequate of either they will trip that's a guarantee annually you also may want to these came with um, access ports so you can check the inlet side of the coil to make sure no dirt debris has got passed and if there is you can you know sweep them off with a fine broom or vacuum um, so this is a nice feature here that way you can inspect and look refrigerant coils here that would be the coil you would be looking at every year your drain pan um, if you have a lot of bacteria in there you know you can have algae buildup which 
hopefully that ain't the case here, but I mean, keep an eye on that. You may need to use like an algicide or something, but I, I doubt it. You don't see that case very often, but it does come with a um, overflow switch on the drain pan, which means if something does get clogged, the unit will, that water level will get up that high and it will shut the unit off. That way it doesn't keep running and cooling and condensating. Uh, on the geothermal side, each unit comes with its own strainer on the inlet and your flow control valve. And each unit's got its own sealed pump, runaround pump to pump through the coax coil and up and out. Um, on any kind of dirt and debris, this is where you would have it the most would be in the geo. So if you do notice the unit's tripping out on high head or something, you can valve off the unit up here and the strainer bonnet, after you drain the water out, you could break it, check the strainer, clean it, and put it back together, and you're good to go. Um, other than that, there's really, as long as you got good water flow, good air flow on these things, and everything's running properly, there's not a whole lot that you have to do. And actually, it looks like in this case, they put thermometers in the supply and return air, so that's a good thing you can check, see what kind of delta you got across the coil. So, well, the gauges here, I mean, this is, it's all gonna vary on, on temperature and, you know, situation. I mean, if you got a really hot room, you may bring, you know, bring it back 80, 85 degree return air. And, you know, you'd like to at least see somewhere around a 20 degree drop across the coil. That's, that means when that air is coming across, you're dropping that down 20 degrees like that. But it all depends on the conditions of the space that you're trying to heat or cool. So, but that's, that's all this is for, it's just air temperature. But on these, that's pretty much it. Um, they're running off the building automation, so, um, you know, they'll run as the, the building, the BAS system says it needs to. So, that's basically it. All right, we're here on the second floor at uh, Scott High in the pump room. Um, this is the pump for the building. Um, basically, it doesn't run all the time because each uh, heat pump has its own individual pump. Um, this frequency drive which runs this pump is it's sensed off the flow rate between the uh, supply return. Um, maintenance wise, there is some grease ports here um, on this top bearing and you got a bottom bearing. Um, if this was a pump that ran all the time, I would say grease it probably every two to three months, but since this one doesn't, you may want to start out every four months. Um, you may see that that may be too much. Um, you may go every six months because it doesn't run all the time. Um, in this particular setup up here, um, you do have a chemical feeder, which that's this right here, and basically You'll have uh, somebody come out and test your, your water. You know, they'll test the, the levels for whatever, you know, whatever chemical that you have in it. And this is where you add it. Um, there's shutoff valves here. So basically when you go to add chemical, you would valve these off. And there is a drain, kind of like the uh, uh, filter downstairs, same deal. You'll open that, relieve the pressure, take the lid off, and Either, I don't know if your maintenance guys will be doing it or if you'll have like Bluegrass Kesco come out, you know, every so often and they'll do it. I don't know how that's set up, but either or, if it is your guys, you know, you'll add whatever you need into this. And same deal, when you go to open it back up, you want to open the one valve slowly and get that water level up to the top. Put your lid back on and then go ahead and open your other side. That way you're not introducing a bunch of air into the system. Um, up here on the, the geo side, you do have another side stream filter, which is here, which to access, you can pull this arm flex up here. And this one here has got bag filters in it, which I do, these bag filters are good for like three times around. Um, you can wash them. Um, same kind of deal on this. You do have um, a valve back here underneath and you've got a valve here. There's a differential uh, sensor here. That, that's what these pipings here are. So basically, when this is running and you're filtering the, the geo, the water, when this filter starts filling up and getting a bunch of sediment in it, that differential is going to get greater and greater and greater. 
So at that point in time, that says, hey, you know, you need to change me, you know, so that's when you'll proceed with valving off this, you know, draining it down. There is a drain valve here. <clears throat> Basically, on this, you've got a vent. You can take this uh, plug out, open it up as the drains open, help vent, you know, the drain the, the tank here. Just undo this, these wing nuts, take the top off, and that's, that's where you'll find your, your filter there. Clean it out, wash it out, put it back in. Open the one valve, open the vent, get the air out, open it back up, and you're good to go. That's kind of nice having that feature there with the differential because it kind of tells you, hey, you know, you need to change your clean your, your filter. Um, that's pretty much it on this. Um, frequency drive, getting back to that, there's not really anything to do maintenance wise on it. You know, every once in a while you may want to get up in the airports that has its own fan to cool it off and blow dust out if you have a lot of dust, dusty area. You may want to do that maybe annually, check it. It may not even be dusty, but just in case. Um, but maintenance wise, there's really nothing due to the frequency drive. Um, so that's pretty much it on this, the pump, everything else. Over here, this is the um, circuits, you at six. This is where they come in from um, down below. They come in from the ground, they come up and each circuit has its own butterfly valve for, for isolation. All these have their own PD plugs and thermometers, which is nice. That way you can see what kind of temperature drop or rise you have across each individual circuit. And then with the PD plugs here, you could check your, your uh, pressure drop across to see if there's maybe um, a clog or something in the one, if you're not getting as, as much uh, conductivity in the ground. So that's kind of nice to have any kind of troubleshooting um, that you may need to do. But they come in here and they come up and you have that ability on all of them and they come into a, a, a big header for the building and that's basically it on this. There's no maintenance or anything. This will always just kind of maintain unless there's an issue. Um, you notice you don't, uh, when you come in, you can, all these should kind of, when, when everything's up and running, they should be relatively equal. So that's kind of an indicator if you see something going on where you, you know one may be higher or lower than the other five or whatever, that'll kind of give you an idea, hey, maybe something's up, we need to check in to this circuit a little bit further. So that's kind of nice to have on this. Um, also up top here, something else to look at. Um, this here is your, your water makeup for the geo. Um, if you look here, you have a control valve which that's tied into the BAS. And basically that, that's gonna open up whenever the, the building pressure drops. That's gonna allow water in. Also you have a, right after that, you have a flow meter, which also you can see on um, the BAS system that lets you know how much water you're taking in. And that's, that's actually good to have because if you notice you're taking on you know, X amount of gallons a month, that means, hey, we got a leak somewhere. So that's nice to have. And then, of course, you got your PRV and then your pressure uh, sensor right after that. So the bulk of everything that's up here, you can see on the computer. So, and I'm sure it's set up to where if there's, you know, you're taking on too much water, I'm, I'm not positive, but it, there may be an alarm or something like that. But that's basically it on this. So um, maintenance-wise, there's really nothing you need to do. I mean, it's just a water line, so that's basically it.